Okay, welcome to Comfy Hour number two. This is part two of <sighs> um, mixed people not having a safe space in their heritages. Alright? So, I did the avatar part first because it was the easiest part to do. Now, when I entered that live this morning, I was woke up. It was probably like 3 or 4 o'clock in the morning. So, I was listening to it, but I was mostly asleep. So, they had this issue with some lady who's African talking to some lady who is not African, but black. And the discussion was about people being black, black, or half black. All right? Which was right up my alley. So I was focusing and all listening to this shit while I was trying to sleep because I was tired as fuck. So the bottom line is that one of the ladies that um, wouldn't give the lady from America who is black the option of talking... Because this is the same rude woman that came after me. Um, she um, she didn't ever hear the term black or full black. Alright? Which is a term I've had to live with for 49 years. And that's why this part is the second part of the video. And it is also going to be the longest video. Because, wow. As a mixed person who has safety goggles flying all over the place. Anyway, <laughs> let's hope nothing else goes down. Anyway, as a mixed person who um who thought that I could walk in all three worlds and slowly learning that it depends on the worlds on which I step. Alright, so this was a black group. Alright? And so as I listening in, you know, I didn't chime in until the Avatar thing came in, but I did listen in for the whole damn section because I kind of went to bed to it and woke up and it was still on. And that's when it started talking about some, are you black, black, or are you mixed, black? Well, here's that thing about being mixed, all right? This is why I said mixed people don't have a safe space in their heritages. And it's not all of their heritages, but it's a bulk of their shit. And unfortunately, most of my problems that I have been given had come more from black people than white people than native peoples, all right? My least problem has been with native people. I had two bad incidences with natives. Maybe seven to ten with whites, but a lifetime with black people. And so we are going to focus in on that, and I'm going to hurt your feelings if you are black, so I apologize to you now. I do not hate all black people or all native people or all white people for these incidences, because this is just how life works. And you can be an asshole and a racist for your incidences. Or you can push forward it and learn to live with the shit that has happened. Alright? So, again, this is a black space. So, I thought because I'm part black, I had a place to speak. And I didn't. And that's how the whole Avatar thing just went to hell in a handbasket and just kept blowing up, blowing up, and everybody started coming at me in the comments and all this other bullshit, and it's cool. I ain't mad about that shit. I'm 49. Y'all just dumb. We are, you know, for some motherfuckers that don't really exist, but they just was some culture vultures that made a fucking movie, all right? But as, as long as we're fighting each other about it, you know, it's never going to get fixed because I belong there. Whether you want to accept me is a whole nother ball game. But this is why mixed people do not have safe spaces in their heritages in a lot of places. Alright, so, like I said, I'm part native, I'm part black, I'm part white. I've never had a problem on TikTok with native TikTok. No one's come at me with half-breeds, you're not pure, you don't belong here, etc., etc. Alright? But in that black community, you know, it's, um, it's hard to find a safe black space when you are mixed. And this could only be me. I'm not going to blame every other black creator in TikTok because one person in somebody else's live decided, hey, let's throw, at, let's throw everything we got at Echo because he doesn't believe that it could be Sudanese um, stuff. Okay. I didn't say I didn't believe it could be Sudanese stuff. I just said that, you know, it's more Inuit than Sudanese because the whales. You know? There's a lot of tribes that deal with whales. And granted, most of those tribes are on the West Coast. Up and down the West Coast Peninsula or the West from California's bottom up to Washington State and into Canada and into Alaska. A lot of those tribes did whaling and some of them swam with whales. You no. Know? 
Wills was sometimes a good omen, etc., etc. But this isn't going to be about that. This is going to be about mixed people not being accepted in their heritage spaces. Like I said, let me get this out of the way. As a child, and as a teenager, not so much as an adult, but as a child and a teenager, is when I start having my issues. As, as a young man in my 20s is when I had my issues with Native Americans. That was it. Only two of them. Only two of them. So these two natives decided that I wasn't good enough to date their niece, who was like the tribal chieftain's daughter. And they were probably next in line, and I don't know if they had kids, but she was the chieftain's daughter. All right? Because there's, there's, there's a different dichotomy in Native culture. All right? If you are a chief or the tribal chieftain, something or other, you have rank and privilege in the, the tribes, and I'm probably saying this shit all wrong, so if you're out there and you're Native, please come and explain that to people, because I can't. Because I was not raised on a res. My family never embraced our Native heritage. I'm the only one that does it on my mom's side. I'm the only one that's doing it on my dad's side, except for like one of my cousins who's being a douchebag full of dick tips that won't give me the information that I need so that I can finish this reconnecting journey without having a problem because this dumb some bitch thinks that I'm gonna steal our great grandmother's nothing. She's dead. What the fuck am I gonna take from a dead woman? But he's a douchebag full of dick tips. Fuck him. I ain't got time to cry about it. Now, as far as that happening, I posthumously insisted that I would roll one of those natives down a hill. And when his brother came at me, I posthumously insisted that I would roll him into oncoming traffic. So, yeah, that was bad of me, but, you know, they started it. And I don't start fights, I finish them. So, that was that. Did I physically do anything to them? No. But I did physically threaten the fuck out of this shit. But that's, that's on me. I own that shit. Now, there was lots of white people, but most of the white people were um, through grade school and into high school. And I didn't really have too many problems after high school with a lot of white people being racist towards me. And it was um, that one racist dude... If you want to call him racist, I can't call him racist because I don't know if he was racist. I do know that he pissed me off every motherfucking week for three goddamn years straight, calling me chief every time I went to work. And every time I went to work, it was like he knew my work schedule. It was like he jumped behind the counter and knew my fucking work schedule. And it would be, hey, chief, what's up, chief? Like, waiting outside. I pull in, I put on my little Kegler shirt and get ready to go in there to wash these dishes. Hey, chief, what's going on, chief? How, Chief? And I'm like, oh, fuck. And you know, customer's always right. Even when they're being a douchebag full of dick tips, customer's always right. That's what you're taught when you start taking a job. All right? So I had to deal with that shit. Y'all might not think it was racist. I kind of thought it was racist. But, you know, I asked my boss to get the man to call me by my name. And my boss, Frank Stoner, how you doing, Frank? Would always tell me the same shit. Customer's always right. Frank's not outside when this guy's calling me chief. Frank's not in the building when this guy's calling me chief. Frank's probably giving the guy the quarters to play. Don't tell my heart, my achy, breaky heart. I got friends in little places. The Thunder Rose and way down yonder on the Chattahoochee. I actually know the words to most of those songs. Why? Because I had to deal with them motherfuckers for three goddamn years. And he played that song, bitch. Back to back to back to back to back to back to back. From... 4 p.m. to 11 p.m. He only took breaks to come outside and smoke cigarettes because the jukebox is in a non-smoking area. I don't think the jukebox is still there. It's been forever since I've been at Kettler's. But anyway, the point being made, the white dude wouldn't stop calling me chief. Now, black people. Black people, on the other hand, that's where I've had my worst racism from. That is where I had my worst fucking racism from. And not from family. Not from family, but from, like, general black people who would look at me and be like, Hey, you Mexican? He's like, no, but I am part native. And at this time, I didn't know the Mexicans were natives because ignorance is golden. And when I found out that Mexicans were part native, I stopped worrying about being called the Mexican because Mexicans are indigenous to America, period. And there's a lot of indigenous erasure going on. And unfortunately, especially on TikTok, it's coming from fucking black people who are Moors or Hebrew Israelites or whatever the hell they're going around calling themselves and then identifying themselves as gods and kings. I'm like, well, I can understand you being a king. Do not think that you are a god because if your ass can, can die, you are not a god. 
Yeah, so stop saying that shit. And again, this is only coming from black people on TikTok. So if you're black, please don't take that shit the wrong way. I am not mad at you and I'm not hating on you. I am telling you a life shared experience of how mixed people do not have a safe space in their heritage spaces. Right? And I learned that this morning. And again, you know, I, I, I've denied it. I ain't gonna lie, I denied it because I thought, okay, well, maybe this group is just not for me. You know, maybe these just a bunch of black people that just want to be douchebags, you know. But now, nah, now nah, this is the third group that I've been in where, you know, um, because I'm mixed, I'm, my opinion means absolutely fucking nothing to them. Now, funny, I can talk to native TikTok about this and it's not a fucking problem. I can get on comic talk. <coughs> Where I push for native superheroes to be recognized. I can get on martial talk. There's no racism on martial talk. You know, we all here to do martial arts. There's no genderism. There's no racism. We are there to show motherfuckers how to kick people in the face. And enjoy it. So, there's no racism there. Uh, we, we show weapons. We do all kinds of shit on martial TikTok. And we talk about martial arts. Because it's our life. Same thing with comic talk. Same thing with Native Talk. Native Talk, we talk about MMIP. We talk about war. We talk about land back. We talk about the shit that's important. And those black people that do indigenous erasure are never there to back up any of that shit. They're only there to say that we stole their identity. And now we're the natives and they're not. Okay. Now, here's where shit goes from 0 to 60. This morning, this lady, this rude-ass lady, who's from Africa... So I can't really call her rude. I can just say maybe she does not have the knowledge that is necessary. So let's do that. Let's me apologize for calling her a rude ass lady. I'm sorry about calling this lady a rude ass lady. What I should have said respectfully is this lady just does not have the knowledge of how America or American blacks view blackness. All right, because there are some people who are mulatto or like my mom, white passing, and um have some black in us, the two drop rule, that kind of shit. Cause my mom looks like a white person. She straight looks like a white person. If you put her in a mall full of white people, you would never find her. That's why I nicknamed her Premium Blin. Now, my dad, he looked like a black person. His dad was black. His mom was native. My mom's dad was mixed. He looked like a white man with a tan. But one of his parents was black. He's the people we're talking about. My mom looks exceptionally white. All of her siblings look brown. They're all this color versus this color, all right? There's some of us that are this color, but this is sun-earned, you know? You turn that in, you can see that's light, like a lot lighter than that. But I just refuse to wear long sleeve shirts unless it's really, really cold outside. We're, we're mixed. We know we're mixed. But we were raised to just embrace blackness. So there you go. However, it's hard to embrace something that does not embrace you back, all right? Now, as a child, I mentioned this before at my school, at Berlin Rand, there was some race wars going on where the white kids would tell me I'm a zebra and I can't really be trusted. And the black people would also tell me I'm a zebra and I can't really be trusted. And for further references, um, check out the Jeffersons for the... H word and the N word, y'all already know. George Jefferson's racial insult. According to Wikipedia, on the TV series The Jeffersons, George Jefferson regularly referred to a white person as a honky or whitey, as did Red Fox on Sanford and Son. This word would later be popularized in episodes of Mork and Mindy by Robin Williams and Jonathan Winters. I refuse to use those words. Alright, whitey is not too bad. Actually, it's pretty bad. But the H word, now you know what it is. I don't think that I should ever, ever call a white person that. Just like I don't think I should ever call a black person the N word. I also don't think that anybody native should be called chief unless they literally are the fucking chief. Alright? But that word there was um, what the black kids would say. Um, they left off zebra for some reason. No. What did George Jefferson call the mixed daughter on... Um, God damn it. 
Damn it, it ain't show me. Okay. Oh, it didn't say it. Call Louise. I don't know who the hell Louise is. Wheezy? No, that's his wife. He didn't call that. Uh, what the hell was her name? What did George Jefferson call Lionel's daughter? Lionel's daughter, not Lionel's daughter. According to Wikipedia, Jenny Jefferson. At first, George often disapproved of Jenny loving Lionel merely because she is biracial, or as George called her, a zebra. You understand now, right? So, Jenny Jefferson. George Jefferson disapproved of her because she was part black and part white. Lionel was George's son. And Jenny was Tom and, um, what's her name, Helen Willis upstairs, who were biracial. So now you understand. Let's see. What year was the Jeffersons on TV? 1975. According to Television Academy interviews, the Jeffersons, which appeared on CBS television from 1975 to 1985, focused on the lives of a nouveau riche African-American couple, George and Louise Jefferson. Okay. So, 75. I was two. 85, I was in school. 75, I'm two. Because I was born in 73. So, 76, 77, 78, 79, 80, 81, 82, 83, 84, 85. So in 83, I was 10. And from then, you know, the term zebra, half-breed, if you think back that these were not being terms that I was hearing in school, you'll understand where I'm coming from. And now that you've seen this video, you understand why I don't use the H word and I don't use the N word. Those are some racist ass words. So here's the thing. I see. 73, 73, 74. Well, it should be like more like 74, 75, 76, 77, 78. So in 78, I was in school. So that was 5. 79, 80, 81, 82, 83. That would make me 10. And I'm still in grade school. And the race wars was happening doing that. You know? And so um, I went through some shit. And a lot of it was with black and white kids, but it was more from the black kids than the white kids, because the black kids were like, yeah, you're a zebra, you're a zebra. No white kids say, you're a zebra, you're a zebra. But then the black kids were like, yeah, you're the H word, you're part H. And the, the white kids would never call me the N word, but they would always call me the zebra. All right? Now, as a grown ass man, you know, I'm, I'm past that shit now. And you would think that because of technology, and you would think that because I know I'm multicultural, I don't deny my heritage, but you would think that on an app such as TikTok, makes people like me would have a space. We don't. We have some spaces that we can slide into, and some people feel like they can welcome us. And then there's been three black groups that I've been in where I get the fucking finger. Today was one of the was like the third black group I've been in where being mixed has worked against me on so many levels. So when you hear Black people say, oh, you're black, but you're not black, black. You're not full black. Those are things that I chimed in on this morning. I didn't chime in consciously, but I was listening to this shit. And this same woman who went after the black woman, who tried to explain what I just explained to y'all, to her, gave her all the shit in the world. And somehow another avatar came up. And that explains everything in my first video. When Avatar came up, I chimed in because I was conscious. Conscious enough to know, no, I was like, Sudan, this is like Inuit shit. You know, it's like, what? Because of the goddamn whales. I didn't say it wasn't Sudan. I said it was Inuit shit because of the fucking whales. And like I said, I've Googled and Googled and Googled, and we're going to do it again. Did the Sudanese tribe swim with whales? So, it says, Classic Sudanese Ocean Tribal Fleet. That's not what I asked for. Why do whales swim to Tonga? You can swim with whales in Tahiti. Why do whales go to Samoa? 
How long does it take for whales to swim to Tonga and back to Antarctica? Tonga humpback whales. Swimming with whales. Watch this. Maybe it'll talk. Do the navy blue Sudanese people swim with whales? Sri Lanka blue whale expedition snorkeling. How close is Sri Lanka to the Sudanese? I can't find that place. Yeah, neither could I. But that's just to go with what was going on with the thing and how Avatar became the biggest explosion of my day. But the thing was, you know, when they were talking about black people using the term black, black, or full black, you know, they had my attention. They just didn't have me conscious. And I tried to explain, you know, when I got to talking about the native part of Avatar, and she started talking about the Sudanese. It's like, well, I ain't got nothing to do with the Sudanese because I don't know that shit. Most African Americans have no knowledge of where the fuck they came from. No, we really don't. Because that's a part of our lives we ain't never going to get back. And we've had to accept that shit. However, as a mixed native and black person, I understand that I could belong to both that Sudanese tribe as well as that native tribe. But I wasn't allowed to really say that because everybody started coming at my ass in the comments. You know, shut up, stop pushing this, you're doing this, you're doing that, you're doing too much. It's like, dude, I'm part native and I'm part black. If anybody's got a dog in this fight, it's me. No, no, wasn't really welcomed in that. And this is why I said mixed people do not have a safe space in their heritage because all of the people in there were black people. It was a safe place for black people. They let me know that I didn't have a dog in this fight to talk about black people. I literally mentioned as a mixed native in my comment section for them. I was like, look, as a mixed native, I'm pretty sure, you know, because I, I literally typed in there, I am mixed native, black, and white. I'm pretty sure that this is more Inuit than Sudanese. Not one time that I say it wasn't Sudanese because of the markings, which is why I made these three videos, because I just Googled that shit. Again, I found nothing. Nothing. Watch this. Image of the Blue Navy Sudanese tribe. I meant to say Navy Blue. That match. Okay. So, where's the markings? This is what I want. This dude's markings. Alright, you see him? They do have markings on people like that in the Avatar Way of Water movie. I do not know how they get those markings, and I am not volunteering for that shit. Alright? I got enough wrinkles right here. Now that, I'll give her that. You know, because those markings look very, very familiar to the Avatar Way of Water markings. I'm not going to deny that shit. But, they're going to need to bring me information about their tribes swimming with whales. Period. That's it. No. Cause I never said it wasn't Sudanese. Now get back on topic here about um, black black and full black or whatever. The rude lady wouldn't let the nicer lady speak about how black people address people who are part black. Because it, it's, it's no secret that when you meet somebody who's part black, especially if they're white passing, and they have a little bit of black in them, or if they look like my mom, who's completely white looking, it's like, oh, so you got a little bit of black in you. You know, just a little bit. So you black, but you're not black black. All right? That's nothing new to us. Now, granted, this lady's from Africa, so she has no fucking idea how African Americans actually work, where I have been told the same fucking shit most of my life by black people. I have passed the paper bag test, you know, the, the test that says if you're um, closer to white with, you know, you get this piece of paper, you see there, and now you see there, no, so down here, you see this is, li this is lighter, this is lighter, and then up here, they're roughly the same. But we used to do it against skin tone. And, you know, I have a permanent farmer's tan. <laughs> but it doesn't change the fact that 
I've had to deal with the paper bag test. Alright? And I've had most of my worst racist things happen to me from black people when it came to acceptance. And it has happened on a job once or twice with a black lady from England and somebody else that was black. And I put black on the application and they would look at me like I was fucking insane. And they'd be like, are you sure you're black? And I was like, dude, I know what the fuck my color is. You know? It's like, what? I was like, look, I'm not full black. But my birth certificate has Negro written on it. And Virginia is a right to work and fire state. So if I allow my application, I could be fired. So I put black on everything. Everything. I know I'm mixed. But my birth certificate does not have me as mixed. It has my ass as black. You can look me dead in the face and see that I'm fucking mixed. Alright? But back when I was born, they didn't count that. They just decided that I was black. That was it. I didn't get a say in the matter. My birth certificate says my mother's name, my father's name, my name. And it has all of our races as black. So... Rather than going through the history lesson of my family, and you know, it's it's when you get out in society, we will be like, oh, you don't look black. It's like that's because I'm not all the way black. But when you go apply for a job, what do you put? And I say, well, I put black. It's like, but well, you're not all the way black. And I tell them again, as this is a right to work state, and a right to fire you for any given reason state. I do not allow my application. If they ask me why I quit black, I tell them because that's what my birth certificate says. And then they'll argue with me again. But you don't look black. I'm like, I know. But that does not change the fact that I am legally a black man. You know? And they were like, you sure? And I'm like, dude, I got to put what the birth certificate says. If you have questions, I can ask them. But my birth certificate straight says that I'm black. So I have to put black. I say, do you understand the concept that it's not that I want to, it's just that legally, I don't have a fucking say in the matter. Now, I'm not going to pay $9,500, $100,000 to try and get all that shit changed. I know I'm mixed. You can look at me and see that I'm mixed. And if you can't, well, whoop de doo I'm whatever you see at the time you see me. Okay? But nine times out of ten, and I'm going to say this, because we are 30, well, we'll be 30 minutes in by the time I'm done. People have come to me many a times. Are you mixed? And I would say yes. And it's like, what are you mixed with? And it's like, oh, I'm part black. It's like, yeah, what are you mixed with? And I'm like, I'm part native and I'm part black. I'm also part white. Which which one do you see? It's like, oh, well, we didn't know you were part black. We thought you were just all native. And I was like, I am not that blessed, but thank you. You know? And then other people are like, oh, are, are you some kind of Mexican or an Indian? And I'm like, well, yes, I am some kind of Indian. I'm a mixed Indian. But, you know, these are the experiences that I've had. But when it came to black people, it was, you're not really one of us. And when it came to little black girls as a kid growing up, it was, you're never going to be good enough for us. You're never going to marry one of us. You can't be with us because you're not really one of us. You're a zebra. You're a half-breed. So I stopped dating black girls. And then I caught the backside of that. Why don't you date black girls? So you think you're too good for us? It's like, motherfuckers, you can't have it both ways. You understand the clusterfuck. And this is why I said, in most times, mixed people don't have a safe space. We really don't. And I want you to understand I'm not trying to be a douche about this. And I want to once again apologize to anybody black that I am offending. All right, because I know I'm offending you, and I'm sorry. And you don't have to accept it, you know. But you do have to understand, you can't take away my life experiences from me. You can't say that it didn't happen. I can say that it happened. I lived it. It's it's kind of fucked up when you go visit your aunt in Smithfield, and they live in a trailer court, and it's like, hey, y'all cousin, he don't look like the rest of y'all. He don't look like us. You can't discount my life when I have other people who are not in the family saying, eh, why, why, why is he with us? You know, he ain't really black. He's, he's like a half breed, you know? And then if, if you've paid attention, there have been some videos on TikTok that um, a lot of people who are mixed 
have played and talked about and if I find a video I'll make a video about it but um happens to deal with Bugs Bunny and Native Americans but anyway before I end this thing I just want you to understand that a lot of mixed people we do not have a place in our heritage that is safe that being said I'm gonna end this video I'm gonna look for that other video and then we're gonna talk about that but that being said I want you guys to understand I'm not here to make people angry at black people I'm not angry at black people I am telling them though you know if you have a black issue and I'm half black why do I not have a say in it why can I not have my voice or my opinion heard and native TikTok accepts me why can't black TikTok accept me and that's the thing mixed people do not have a safe space within all of their heritages it's not every group of black people but these three groups so far have had nothing to do with me and have had said shit to me in the comments that's fucked up. I'm not gonna out them. I don't have time for this motherfucking drama. You can say that drama for your motherfucking mama. I don't have time for that shit. I wanna live. I wanna respect you. But more importantly, I wanna be respected by you too. Because respect is given as well as earned. And I'm done trying to earn respect from black people. I'm done. If I don't get it, I don't care anymore. Either you're with me or you're not. And it shouldn't be a thing about color. It shouldn't be a thing about race. But when it comes to us mixed people, it's always one or the other. If I was white passing right now and just made this video, no one would take that motherfucker serious. As a person who has more native features, there's going to be some black people who are going to be very, very mad at me. And I've had people in some of my videos... Literally, if you go back and search some of the comments, because I don't get a lot of comments, so you shouldn't be that hard to find. I literally made a video, and somebody put in my comments, you ain't even black. So yeah. Matter of fact, let's make a part two about this. Just to be on the safe side. No, because this is 30 minutes of your life you can't get back. And I want to give you a couple of more.